And back tonight is a remarkable friend of ours and a friend of yours. His name is William Tompkins. Bill has been a guest a number of times. And if you look on the right-hand side of our page for you, rents.com, you'll find a, an entire section about Bill Tompkins and our former conversations. Tonight's will be another one. Uh, it's a whole journey. You can jump in on each one of them and be taken on a, a little voyage that your mind will uh, thank you for. Extraordinary things are discussed and talked about, things that maybe aren't supposed to be talked about, but they are, and Bill is not about to slow down at this point. Remember always that when you think about outer space, inner space, uh, the oceans, the seas, the land, doesn't matter if there's water around it, and there's something going on with respect to the military, private operations, hidden operations, ultra-top-secret operations. It's almost invariably the Navy, the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Navy in outer space. It's, it's here. The U.S. Navy is everywhere. And many of you have been to Palm Springs. It's a remarkable place. You look almost seemingly straight up, and you have enormous mountains right there. Mount San Jacinto, and very pretty. Uh, it's also, interestingly enough, the subject of part of our conversation tonight, and I can't wait to find out what Bill Tompkins has to say about uh, San Jacinto. Hello, Bill. Welcome back. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Looking forward to the program. Good, good. And now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Bill has a background that we've covered many times, and I hope you'll go back and listen to the programs and and understand that this man has lived through history like few others have. Uh, he also happens to have lived for a long time where I am, which is, we've had a lot of very interesting, well, no coincidences, remember, but unusual connections. And uh, it's always fun to talk to Bill. It seems like an old friend. And in many ways, I guess we are friends. Uh, Bill, what have you heard from people who have listened to the earlier programs? What what are you getting in terms of feedback? What kinds of comments from people? Oh, kind of interesting, really. Uh, getting calls from uh, France and getting calls from Russia and uh, really the United States, but wow. amazing. And uh, so, uh, all your efforts to get the program around the planet are are certainly successful. Uh, and I, I'm amazed. It's uh, extremely interesting. Well, it, that we're getting. Yeah, it, that's nice. Uh, it is true, and I've I've uh, been aware of it vaguely. But this program is listened to literally worldwide, and wherever you are in the world, we really appreciate you being there. And what we have to offer you, I think, uh, is of great interest to you, or you wouldn't be listening. Our Russian listeners, we have a huge audience in Australia. Uh, Great Britain, all around the world, uh, people who are realizing at long last that things are not as we are being told. And they're listening to people like Bill Tompkins, who is one of a kind, tell us what's really happening. At least give us information that we can think about and process and come up with our own decisions. We know one thing uh, unequivocally, and that's that the government and the military will always lie to us. That's just the nature of the beast. They uh, they will not share. So good, Bill. Uh, people in Russia calling. Very interesting. Well, it just seems like uh, maybe what we should do is back off just a little bit and kind of open this this program up. Uh, there's there's one gosh there's one real important thing I think we all need to we need to address it. We need to try to relate to it. Sure. Uh, Go to it. The uh, this this universe is a very very big place to be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, as many as two hundred billion galaxies exist out there. We didn't talk about planetary systems like the solar system. Now these are galaxies like the Milky Way. Yeah. These are galaxies. Two hundred billion at least. <laughs> At least 200 billion. And then we have billions, billions of stars in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Oh, my gosh. And, and so for us to take this approach, 
which unfortunately we've been lied to, like you said, um, that there's no other people uh, out there in the universe but us. Uh, it's kind of naive. That's and, it's ridiculous uh, is what it is. It's absolutely absurd to even say something as dumb as that. Good Lord. Um, 200 billion galaxies, all with over billions of stars. <laughs> My gosh. And these stars, most of these stars have planets. Yeah. Like the little solar system that we have. Right. Some of them have two, two stars. Uh, some even have three stars. That would be a hard place to live. You wouldn't really? know whether three. it was day or night. Three suns. Yes. How, how wild would that be? A binary would be tough enough, but three? Yeah. Wow. Wild. And, but just to, to think that we're part of this situation and that uh, people have been cruising, uh, certainly not just the Milky Way galaxy, all of these other galaxies for probably billions of years. And so we're just touching the tip of the iceberg when we're talking about this subject. Yes. I think it. Uh, I think people should write that number down, and every once in a while just look at it and stop and think of what we're 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 now visualizing. We can go out into the desert, or we can go out of town and just on a nice clear night look up at the sky. There's hundreds of thousands of stars that we can see. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Even astronomy is fantastic. Uh, and our position in this uh, is unbelievably uh, more important than maybe we think. But uh, we are just now learning what's going on. And I think that the more we can discuss this, this whole subject, uh, the better we are all are going to be. And uh, sort of tonight, I would, I don't know what uh, you folks were going to say, but I would sort of like to talk about the galaxy itself. And, uh, oh, that's fine. A little bit, yeah. A little bit about where we are in it. And uh, uh, essentially, the situation of, uh, say, hypothetical cases where you will accept that other people are out there in the galaxy, they're cruising the galaxy. Uh, some of them are just grandchildren with grandma and grandpa on a cruise ship, a cruise galaxy ship, cruising the galaxy, having them all. Others are coming here, they take a look at us, they don't pay much attention, and they go on to the rest of their cruise. So it's and, tour, and, tourism exists on the basis that you're describing it. I've, I've often poked fun at that knowledge that people coming here as tourists would see quite a show <laughs> on this yeah, planet. You're right, really. Uh, uh, and, and I think maybe when they could just look at how we don't necessarily get along with each other, uh, they, could, they could be laughing all the way to the next part of the galaxy. I, uh, yeah. I agree with it, you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, this could be fun. And uh, how many gal how many have. galaxies again? Now, can, keep in mind when you look up at the Milky Way, friends, and it stretches from horizon to horizon, a band of these bright, concentrated dots of light. Uh, that's our little, relatively speaking, galaxy. That's a, it's an enormous place. That this galaxy. How many galaxies? Tell them again that we know about or can project are out there in the known universe? We have over 200 billion galaxies, <laughs> all of them with billions of stars. And I think this is really important to address. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to get ourselves out of this everyday thing that we're forced into and stop and think that we now have this opportunity for instance, to join with other Nordic people and go out into the galaxy with them. Not all that stuff about the wars going on and all the bad side of it, but stop and think of our opportunities. We're just around the corner. We will be able to cruise ships 
out in the galaxy ourselves. I, in, I just in, think that in it's our, yeah. that you're ready. In our Milky Way galaxy, we wouldn't that be wonderful to be able to take a cruise through the Milky Way? Wow. And that's probably being done, as Bill is saying, by other intelligent forms of life in this galaxy right now. Would it explain certainly some of the enormous craft that we've seen in our atmosphere down near ground level? Enormous craft, huge craft. Think of the Phoenix Lights. These craft are over a mile wide, some of them. Just enormous. And they could be cruise ships, for all we know. Uh, it's true. And it is an amazing thing to contemplate. We're kept... Bill, in such a, a little uh, thimble, a little mental prison by the controllers of this planet, we have a birthright to know about what you've just mentioned. We have a birthright to think about the absolute enormity of 200 billion galaxies, each with billions of stars like our own sun. Uh, we don't think about that. We're not talked to about that. We're not told about that. We're not encouraged to ponder that. We're encouraged to feel subservient, trapped, in debt, and under great stress all the time in this little microcosm we call planet Earth. Beautiful. Well put. Really. Uh, it's astounding. And uh, actually... What we're going into, instead of being negative, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to enjoy what takes place. I'm ready. I, I just, I'm uh, ready yeah, to I'm, go. I'm ready, yeah, I'm ready to <laughs> sign up right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, if you don't know, Bill Tompkins is uh, 93, uh, proving once again what I have always said. Uh, it's just a number. If you take care of yourself, if you eat right and perhaps have the kind of connections that Bill has. There's no reason we can't live far longer than the average person. I saw something today, someone died, someone of note, 52 years of age, some TV actor. Now, come on, that's being robbed, cheated. We should go 80, 90 easily and be in full control of our faculties. And you said this could be so much fun. I'm going to put a sign out on my lawn. I'm ready. Uh, land... <laughs> Land here, whatever. Uh, there are a lot of people listening who are probably saying much the same thing. It would be wonderful to get off this, uh, this place. The change in our perspective and our, our hopes and dreams would be instantaneous. And a lot of people, contactees, abductees, have, have had that experience, uh, for better or worse. And there are people out there listening right now who, who know the truth. It's like having which I, I did, I, had an, I call it an after-death experience. When you realize that there is no death, when you get off this planet and realize that there is life everywhere, it's an instantaneous change that you can never retreat from. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I, I agree with you 100%, really. Uh, and uh, the, the fact that uh, we're, we're in this learning curve, which is right now going straight up across the charts. Uh, we're being exposed to reality. We're being, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're learning what we should have learned in the university and in the schools, but it wasn't taught because these people were controlling us and, uh, giving us a difficult time. And I think that, uh, trying to, like you're saying, try to get out of this, atmosphere and into the positive sides of uh, there's a lot of really wonderful things taking place and uh, sort of uh, trying to put this thing together uh, uh, there's when we talk about the galaxies and we talk about the numbers of people or different civilizations that could be out there uh, actually we need to look at our opportunities and uh, the situation with certain extraterrestrials who are uh, assisting us, and I hate to go back to just a couple of three people uh, back at Douglas on the Apollo program, but uh, I, I have to sort of address that because uh, these three people that were helping us mm -hmm. uh, were were... Nordic people, uh, essentially our cousins, if you want the truth. And uh, they come from a different part of the arm of the 
Milky Way galaxy that we're all in. Mm-hmm. And incidentally, uh, we're, we're way out in the boonies. I mean, our yeah. location uh, in this particular Milky Way galaxy, we're like out on the tip of one of the arms of the galaxy. Yeah, uh, we're not downtown where all the action is, <laughs> and so uh, come on. I mean, uh, uh, and so um, the opportunities are tremendous, and and so to address these three Nordic people, whose uh, whose thrust was nothing negative for nearly four years, they wanted us to be successful on the Apollo program. And when we talk about the Apollo program, I don't like to repeat things, but I think it's something that's important. Fine, it's fine to repeat. Just going to the moon was not the Apollo program. Mm -hmm. The Apollo program, phase one, was to build a 10,000-man naval research and operating base on the moon, only it was inside because we were going to build it underground. Uh, That was phase one. Mm -hmm. Phase two of the Apollo was to build naval stations on every habitable planet in the solar system or their moons. Okay? Phase three was to do exactly the same thing on the 12 closest stars. We just explained the real Apollo mission. So when we're trying to put together requirements for the vehicle or for the launch vehicle or for the mission, Mm -hmm. we're not just addressing getting there. We're addressing all the things that we need to do because these are stepping stones for phase two and phase three. So when we got chopped down, go ahead. Uh Uh, a question for our li- so hold that thought when we got shot down a question for our listeners i think what you're clearly putting on the table is the simple fact that the nasa apollo program as it was presented and marketed to the public was essentially a diversion the real program was a, on a second track completely hidden uh the shuttle program was a diversion uh, the, the tragedies were not planned, but they happened. Uh, this is uh, this is a real interesting field for all of you who are perhaps new to Bill Tompkins. There is a whole other aspect of man in space that we have never been told about that Bill is telling us about and sharing with us, and that's that's important to keep in mind. What you're fed in terms of normal information from the government and the military often bears little resemblance, if no resemblance, to reality. Uh, Go ahead, Bill. You said, when we got shot down, what did you mean? Okay, Uh, what I meant was, when uh, the uh, Draco reptilian people who were already there uh, essentially told us, go ahead and finish three or four more of your missions and don't come back. On the moon. Okay on the moon. Now, uh, let's let's back off a little bit on that part. That's not your moon. Wait a minute. (laughs) Everybody says it's their moon. It's not even a moon. It's a space vehicle which is parked. Uh, They had a great big pickup truck. They went out there and pulled this uh, thing that we call a moon (laughs) back into the solar system. Uh And then they pointed it at us. Now, Uh stop and think that really uh, the moon doesn't rotate. No, it's bizarre. It sits absolutely fixed in its position to Earth, and it shouldn't. Uh, Everything else in the universe rotates, (laughs) except this is a command center for a number of different extraterrestrial civilizations people. And uh, it's not just the uh, reptilian space, it's probably 30 or 40 different types of extraterrestrial who are operating in that particular, what we call planet, it's just a vehicle which has been parked there. And it's controlling 
this region of the tip of this arm of the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, so when you look at uh, your moon, which is not yours, and then you stop and think that, uh, well, wait a minute, maybe this is not your planet either because a whole bunch of people are out there using this planet as a laboratory. So in the Apollo program, those two wonderful young ladies and that healthy-looking Nordic guy who helped us on the Apollo program to make it successful for nearly three and a half years, I think that uh, all of the discussion for those periods of time when these three people never made one negative comment everything was plus everything was for accomplishment developing it methods and yes they are very smart people Uh, they come from a different part of the Milky Way galaxy Uh, they are they were here to help us join them out in the galaxy and help us fix our own planet. These were the missions. These were what these people were doing. And there wasn't one single time in the entire time that there was anything negative. Everything was plus. And to realize that you have these three people, even though most of engineering did not accept they were extraterrestrial and it was a big joke, uh, they really were, and they really did accomplish the basic problem areas on the program. Yes, um, they would, in the meetings, they would suggest to me telepathically, they're not in the meeting, we got 10 or 12 of us fighting over some item. Uh, she slipped that answer into my head. I huh. come up with it, and it's the answer or the fix for that part of the Apollo program. Huh. Oh, come on here. Even when my assistant, section chief, and I are on the Douglas DC-7s flying down to the Cape where we've got uh, these facilities being built for the Apollo launches. Yeah. And we're flying there asking ourselves, gee whiz, are we, uh, like my assistant said to me, uh, Bill, uh, is this safe? And I said, what do you mean is this safe? For both of us be going down there. I mean, holy cow, you know, she can do anything back there. Uh, she could sell a program to our, uh, to, to Boeing, uh, our competition. <laughs> uh, she could sell it to the Russians. Uh, uh, really, I think I should go back. And, yeah, and now, the, who is this, who is this, your, your assistant? Yeah, my assistant section chief. Okay, and he was a real sweet guy. Yeah, and uh, and he got worried uh, that uh, that the the uh, the Nordic we woman. We both leave at the same time. That's funny. 